Hello everyone. Um, first, I would like to thank you for uh, joining this session. And before we start, let me just introduce myself briefly to you. Uh, my name is Khalid, and uh, I am a technical engineer at Jennifer Soft in South Korea. Um, today, I'm going to demonstrate and show you the new functionalities and feature of uh, our product, Jennifer Five. So before we start, uh, just let me show you our agenda for today. Um, at the beginning, I'm going to give you a quick introduction. And then after that, I'm going to talk about the functionalities and the new feature of Gen4.5. And then I'm going to talk about the architecture and component of Gen4.5 itself. So I would like to start with a simple question. How will the mobile innovation change the IT world? In nowadays, mobile technologies are, are everywhere and um, end users are using their mobile devices, uh, whether it was um, a smartphone or uh, a tablet or whatever, to access and uh, require a variety of services. For example, the end user can use it for um, online shopping, um, uh, booking uh, travel agencies, uh, finding music, email, social networking, and so on. And this this mobile uh, revolution leads to increase um, in in number of services and uh, and accordingly the demand to provide an efficient and reliable services has also been increased. So um, as a service uh, provider, so what are the customer requirements? So we are talking now from the point of view of the APM vendors. Uh, we have made a, a survey um, we are looking about uh, what kind of um, requirements or what kind of functions we needed to satisfy the clients. Uh, in this graph here we show different kinds of um, performance matrices that are essential to the APM market. Uh, we, are, we made this survey for um, diff a three different sections, the finance section, the government and industry section. So as you can see from, from this distribution or from this graph, um, these two features, the active services and the X view, these are essential and common among all the, in the sectors. And help configuration and analysis, this kind of features in Jennifer, uh, usually we can we can think about it, it's, it's needed, but the use of this feature is not so much convenient, we can say it's inconvenient for the customers. And the last one, the, the user end experience, this is a highly needed function. So having this in our mind, so let's talk about uh, Genfo 5, what is it and what does it consist of? Uh, at the beginning, I'm going to introduce the new features and the enhanced functionalities in Jennifer, And uh, then after that, I'm going to talk about the changes we made in the architecture itself. The first one I'm going to talk about is the individual transaction monitoring. Uh, when we talk about individual transaction monitoring, uh, it's very essential to monitor the transactions individually rather than sample it. Several uh, products can make a sampling technique, but it's not efficient to find the root cause of the problem. So in the individual transaction monitoring, we, uh, we introduced a new functionality called the smart profiling. And uh, briefly, the smart profiling is a way for, uh, for, for you to analyze or to find the um, root cause of the problem more efficiently and more easily. So if we take a look here at uh, Jennifer traditional XVU, um, XV, as you know, it's one of the most powerful features in Jennifer because we can see all the transactions that occurred in the system on uh, in this kind of uh, graph. We can see the end response time for these transactions and we can see the details profile information of each transaction. So when we select transaction, as we can see here, the X view, the pop-up, um, the first thing you can notice is the, the timeline analysis and which we can further divide the transaction into different segments. So if this transaction making um, SQL calls or this transaction making an external call or methods call, we can see uh, clearly in this timeline which segments are being used in the transaction and how long does it take of each of the segments. So the benefit of uh, this timeline analysis, if we take a look at the transaction here in hand, as you can see the, the SQL is taking the longest time and we can just directly click in the 
ask it, or on the on the segment we need and then we, Jennifer will go directly into the call tree into the point with which have the slowest response time um, additionally if we need then uh, <clears throat> if we need more information about the transaction itself uh, for example, let's say this transaction is calling an external services like a search engine or LDAP service. We can configure the external transaction just directly from XView itself. So if we click on the of the uh, of the area we want to configure, we can see a little pop-up menu. And in this menu, we have uh, four main options. If you want uh, to require additional profile information, we can set it by the method profiling. If this transaction is making an external call, we can use external call configuration, and we can also settings for the GUID and uh, the, the user ID settings. So in this example, let's say we want to configure the external call. We can also, after we click on it, we can see the configuration settings menu pop up, and then we can configure the external call uh, settings. For example, we can configure the the, it's the return type uh, or the parameter of the method and we can set the instance and after we, we make our configuration Jennifer will, will once this transaction has been called again we can see here um, on the on the left side of the of the graph we can see here this was before we make the external call uh, external transaction settings and we can see here on the right side is after we make our external transaction settings so to make it more clear, let me just show you um, a live demo. As you can see here in the in this um, example, we can see here the three segments: the method, the SQL, and the external call. So traditionally, if I want say to find the the slowest point in this transaction, I have to drill down into the profile tree which as you can see it's taking a longer time and it's, it's not efficient so it's time consuming and it's not efficient because I have to dig through a lot a, a large number of data and then finally I can reach to the point but uh, with the Jennifer uh, smart profiling function uh, from the timeline I can know okay the SQL has the slowest part and I can just directly click on it and Jennifer will open the profile information to the point we selected and additionally we can configure here by uh, for example this I want to configure this part for the external call um, information so I can just right click on it and then I can see the external call menu I make my settings I click save and then after that once this transaction has been re requested again if I select it on Jennifer X view we can see that uh, the external call information has been presented on the timeline and if I click on it, I can also see the call information or the profile information in the call tree. We can also configure the external call by the settings menu. I'm going to talk later about the settings menu. But if you open here the configuration settings, we can see the class we just set for the external call. We can add ex additional information if we need or additional methods and we can just simply delete it. Okay, that was for the for the XV part. So the second one, as you remember from the from the survey or from the graph I show you earlier, was the active services. And the active services means the the current services like being being processed by the application server. And we can view these active services in Jennifer in um, in the speed meter bar, and we can also see it in the uh, active services equalizer graph. Um, I'm going to talk now about the new functionalities we added or the extended monitoring area we added. Um, the first one I'm going to talk about is um, the real user monitoring, the end user monitoring. So let me explain it with, uh, with this example here. We, we have um, our end user here trying to access some kind of service and as you can see it's taking a long time to load. So we need to know uh, why why this uh, his request is taking a long time to load? Uh, there are, can be several factors uh, affecting the the status of the request. So the first one might be the browser area, and it also might be the network area, and it can also be the the back end the web application server area. And here where the end user monitoring come in hand, 
and as you can see in Jennifer we can see the section analysis it's similar to the timeline analysis but it's for the end user so we can see here from um, from this section analysis that the client side is taking longer time than the server side and we can also see different segments of the transaction from the client perspective so we can see the DOM area the rendering area and the network area and we can also view it as a multi-tier uh, response time graph here and finally if the transaction uh, is making an uh, ajax call we can see the list of all the list of the ajax call has been made by the transactions and we can also view this ajax call in x view by just clicking on the ajax call tree or the ajax call list again let me show you um, a quick demo before we move on to the next one so <clears throat> if i select here the list of the transactions uh, you can see here on Jennifer X view on the table list we can see the client response time um, and we can also if we move to the section analysis we can see the client area and the server area and by selecting the client area I can see the different segments of the transaction either on the timeline or on the multi-tier response uh, response time and finally we can see what kind of ajax call has been made and i just click on the ajax call list and then the transaction i selected can be pop up and shown on jennifer x view next i'm going to introduce the real time topology view um, the real time topology view is still a work in progress we are still working on it and from its name as you can guess it's this kind of uh, you can draw this kind of topology of the system itself starting from the end user going to the web application server area uh, going to the application server area and to the database area and we can see here there is number between each uh, two layers of the topology view which is this layer the color here coded is the active services similar to the active service equalizer graph so the red one will present that this how many um, percent or how many proportion for more than eight seconds the blue one is from zero to one seconds and the green one is from one to three seconds when we click on on the the the, the active services number here we can see x view showing the selected active the selected transactions between the two layers in hand um, if if the system have uh, some some kind of problem jennifer will automatically change the color as you can see the the normal color here is um, in blue but this transaction here in this was number two is um, this means there is a warning in this area and here this means there is a um, fatal or um, critical error and we can just click on it and then we can see the error status on the or the error pop up on the on jennifer itself and also we can see the uh, more information about the trans about the transactions information for example we can see how much is the hit count between two two layers and we can also see the response time as i said at the beginning i'm going to talk about the changes we made in the in jennifer architecture uh, we have made our architecture more scalable and uh, this kind of scalable architecture is very um, helpful and very efficient in analyzing large amount of data and it's also going to be very helpful and very handy in the cloud systems which we are going to talk about later. So as you can see here, uh, this is our the general architecture of Jennifer. We have the agent and the server but uh, we have divided our server into two parts the data server and the views server and the agent part I'm going to talk about data server in one second the agents part we have agent for .NET for PHP and for Java for PHP this is also a new function or new features we can consider it added to Jennifer uh, as I say we divided our servers into two kind of servers the data server which is responsible for processing um, and uh, analyzing the data the fuse server is responsible for showing the data to the client so this kind of uh, uh, architecture is very helpful as i say in case we, uh, we we scale our system so if we increase the number of agents 
we can accordingly increase the number of data servers we need and we can connect it to a single view server. So this, this kind of uh, scalability in the architecture, as I say, is going to be very helpful in the cloud systems. Uh, one of the features of the cloud systems, as you know, is the ex aut automatic expand uh, and uh, shrink for the cloud, uh, if the instance is needed or no. So if we take a look at this cloud um, instance, for example, if there is a new instance has been added, Jennifer is going to automatically detect it, uh, detect this instance. And you can also have a central deployment and central configuration uh, for, for the cloud system from Jennifer. The next thing I'm going to talk about in the architecture we changed is the re repository of Jennifer itself. Um, traditionally, we used uh, Jennifer, uh, we used the uh, sorry Derby database as, as our main repository. Uh, but we have we have changed the, the the main repository. We actually we have developed our own repository, and we call it um, Jennifer repository. And this kind of um, repository we have developed is going to support the scalability things we we talked about, and become very flexible in the scalability. And uh, we can actually process and uh, analyze data m much more faster. Um, to explain this more, let me show you this uh, the analysis menu of, of Jennifer. Um, we can we can now actually uh, analyze data per one second interval. And for example, if I want to see this uh, system information uh, on a specific day, uh, let, let let's just say I want to check how the system response time is doing. Uh, so I'm going to select a specific day, and then I'm going to show the response time in the timeline graph. So as you can see here, there is the high response time in specific intervals of the day, uh, actually in two, two intervals of the day. So let's try to figure out why the response time was getting higher. There would be different factors that can affect the, uh, the response time. For example, it can be the concurrent user. So uh, as we plot the concurrent user, we can see here after we scale it, it does not have that, that huge impact. So probably it might be the garbage collector. But as, again, as we plot the garbage collector, is not uh, the, it, it doesn't have that huge impact. And then we finally check the SQL time. And as we scale the SQL time, we can see that, yeah, maybe probably the SQL time was the reason that our system was, was not performing so much in, in that specific time because there was the SQL time taking a long, the, sorry, the SQLs were taking a long time, the query was taking a long time. As we can see, also we can drill down into one second interval, so we can pinpoint the like which time of the day the this problem occurred or which time of the day this problem happened. The last thing I'm going to talk about is uh, the client itself. Uh, we have changed all the the Jennifer dashboard and all the performance, uh, uh, all the matrixes performance charts to an HTML5 based view. So now we can view Jennifer 5, uh, we can view Jennifer 5 dashboard on a, a PC, on a laptop, or even on a mobile device. As we, as we say at the beginning, this is the era of mobile technology. And typically we don't need to install any additional uh, plugin for, for our browser because just based on HTML5. And as for the dashboard itself, we have made uh, uh, actually dramatic changes in the dashboard. So it's now divided into two main segments, the management segments and the report segment. And in the management area, we have the real-time monitoring. And in the report area, we have the analysis and the statistics. And if you want to see how the system was performing in a specific time or a specific period. For the real time, we have our dashboard. Actually, we have uh, by default we have three kinds of dashboards. We are going to talk about later, and we have something called the real time um, dashboard. Uh, the real time dashboard contain um, an essential matrices that can have a direct impact on the application performance and application health. We are also going to talk about it uh, in in details later. 
and in the report area we have the analysis area where we can analyze um, our system and we can see the statistics information for uh, historical data from the previous uh, days in the past so to explain this more let's take a look at the uh, uh, Jennifer dashboard uh, as you can see here, this is our traditional Jennifer dashboard and on the upper part we can see the, the two segments, the real-time monitoring area and the analysis area. We are going to talk about the real-time at the beginning. All the charts, as I say, has been uh, developed again in HTML5. And if you remember, we talk about the dashboard. We have the system dashboard, the extended dashboard, the manager and the multi-domain dashboard. And the extended one is uh, similar to the system dashboard, but it has more uh, system resources uh, information like the system CPU and memory. Um, now let's just uh, take a look at the manager dashboard. So uh, the manager dashboard, you can think about it as a, uh, for a specific kind of uh, system users. For example, we have a system engineer, we have system admin, so they can use different kind of uh, dashboard. On the left side, we can see the business groups, and on the right side, we can see the essential met, uh, performance metrics information, like the active services, the X view, the um, users information. And the business group, we can see here, we can we can we can configure it directly from the dashboard. We don't need to go to a separate menu. We can just configure which kind of uh, business group we want to show. And for the multi-domain is if our system has uh, more than uh, one domain, so we can configure a multi-domains, and we can see the demand information on the multi-domain dashboard. So we can see also the active services for the domain itself, and we can see the um, users' information for the domains, and we can see the events that occurred in each instance in the domain. We are going to talk about the events um, in the next section. Um, the second one, uh, said, as I say, we have the real time, which contains um, essential uh, performance uh, metrics. Uh, these performance metrics have a huge impact on the system or a direct impact on the system, which are the memory, user, the X view, the active services, the event, and system resources. So let's talk about the, the, first, the event, as I say. Um, this kind of event based, uh, actually, I found it's um, most uh, users like this kind of event uh, based uh, view. In the event base, we have the instance events and the business events, and the color represents the status of each instance. So the red one here, for example, have um, critical warnings, and when we click it, we can see the list of exceptions and messages. And if we take a look at the first one, it um, this kind of event I have a, a rule which is a kind of custom event rule. So we set it this rule uh, when the active services value is greater than 15, Jennifer will automatically issue the alert for us so we can have the predefined um, events and we can actually add events by our own and for the next one for the analysis part I'm going to talk about the statistics part at the beginning um, the statistics part show you the daily system performance information um, we can think about it as a report for your system for a specific for the current day and you can directly print all this information from the statistics menu and you can also make your search criteria for example you want to select which instance you want to use and which instance you want to show and the analysis have a lot of uh, features for analyzing the health and the status of the system for example uh, we can take a look at the thread list if we, our system is experiencing from the uh, deadlock situations we can see the status of the threads here either it's time uh, it's running or it's waiting or it's deadlocked <clears throat> and if we click on the thread we can see the stack trace of the thread so we can detect and trace the thread information if the system was experiencing any problems I'm also going to introduce the configuration uh, menu uh, we can configure and handle a lot of things here. For example, you, if you want to modify your event rules, you can do it by the event rule settings. And you can also configure um, settings for Jennifer Agent's uh, configuration itself. These are the, the text-based, the, the traditional text-based, but now we have the table or the GUI information. So you can just directly by the GUI, you can configure Jennifer Agent. We also have the help menu if you don't know what is this option. So this help will help you. We'll show you a pop-up menu showing the help information. And 
from the, the configuration, you can also conf manage the data server. For example, if you want to manage the data server, the database, so you can delete or you can backup and restore the data, uh, <clears throat> the data from the database. And finally, I'm going to talk about the, the report functionality in Jennifer. Um, the report functionality in Jennifer is becoming become more easier because we have uh, a lot of our customers say that the report is very essential function for them. They want it to become more easily or something they can use on their daily basis, for example, like the Microsoft Office. So we try to make it more convenient and more uh, um, easy for the customers to use. Um, we can see here on the right side, we can see the document box, which you can think about it as a the table of content of the of the report document <clears throat> you can even also export the document information into pdf or into your mobile devices or to your, your email so let me show you a quick demo for the report the report and the configuration are included in all the screens in jennifer we can access it by the upper menus uh, we have added directory structures where you can organize your reports and your documents into folders once we open the report, we, have, we can see the editor, which is uh, very comfortable for the eye. You can just directly edit and add all your uh, charts directly into the editor's area. <coughs> you can also use the document box to navigate into your, uh, your uh, reports. And this document box is automatically detected by Jennifer. So if you update here something, we can see Jennifer automatically update it. And as you can see, the upper uh, uh, bar here, we can use it to manage and setting the report itself. So we can change the font settings, we can add um, graphs, and we can add tables. So for instance, if you add, uh, we want to add some kind of um, charts or table to the to the report, we can just click on the on the table or on the chart, and we can just add our configuration and and our settings, and Jennifer will automatically add it to us. So we can also preview directly here the report, uh, how does it looks like if you want to uh, print it and you can also export it by BTF or by email. Um, that was uh, uh, all for this session and at the end I will just have um, a short video, a promo video I would like to show you and then after that if you have any questions or any uh, note please let me know.